PCB designing is an art with electronic components. The way in which we place the components on the PCB and connect the copper track between them is an intellectual work, which requires a tremendous amount of effort and dedication to acquire this skill. There are numerous topics to learn and understand when you want to become a PCB design engineer in ESDM industry. However, in this particular video, I'm going to give you a detailed explanation about how to design a single layer PCB by using an easy EDA tool. Hello everyone, I am Vaibhav Sugandhi, passionate PCB designer and technology startup founder. Welcome back to our course on PCB designing for Absolute Beginners 2022. I believe you have watched our previous video. If not, click on the i button here and do watch that video before watching this one. If you like our educational content, then help us to reach more people by sharing these videos with your friends and colleagues. There is a quick note for you. You must have completed designing a PCB as discussed in the previous tutorial. I hope you have watched that video and completed that one. But there is a possibility that you have already done a schematic by watching some other videos and you are jumping straight forward to design a PCB layout by this video. No problem, you can watch this particular video and explore the opportunities with designing a PCBs. But if you are following our tutorials for designing a PCBs for the first time, then do make sure that you have completed the schematic design activity as discussed in the previous video before jumping into this particular video. All right, we are back on screen and I believe that you are able to see my screen as well. Now in the previous tutorial, as I discussed, we are done with a schematic design activity. And I hope you are also having the same schematic in your Easy EDA. Of course, you have to log in your account and you have to check with your account with whichever the project name you have given. For sure, I believe you have given it as a plus 5 volt DC power supply as well. And in that you can see that there is something called a schematic, double click on that and you can see this is what the schematic activity which we have done in the previous video. Now the time is to start with PCB layout design. In previous video, I have also covered about how to select the proper footprint for the components which are used in the design activity. And I also believe that you have done that activity before jumping into this video. Now what is this next step is all about, you need to go to the design and click on the convert schematic to PCB. The moment when you click on that, you can see that there are some searching happens at the back end, some verification happens at the back end, which happens very fast. So you can see that the screen is ready with a PCB layout window right now. But if you have done any mistakes, if you have not assigned a proper footprint, not proper footprint, if you have not assigned any footprint, then the software is going to pop up error which is so called ERC error electric rule check or maybe some you know footprint association error which is going to be pop up on your screen just make sure that you clear that error before jumping into PCB layout activity it will not allow you to generate a PCB layout file itself once you are done with that when you click on the convert to PCB if you are having this kind of a pop-up window where you can see that a new PCB pop-up window appears in front of you where you can see that units is mm in fact in, in European country where you know in European continent the most of the products are designed or the product design engineers use the SI unit of distance as a mill when you are designing a PCB layout and all. However, in, in my case or most of my projects whatever I have done so far which is more than 150 projects they are all in MM because in India we most convenient with the MM when you are working with the PCB layout activity and all. So that's why I go with the MM but again you have a choice to go with mills also. And then we need to select the two layer copper design here because when we click on the single layer copper design it will pop up an error saying that you can check with some of their tutorial how to design a single layer PCB without selecting a single layer PCB. I don't know why they are keeping this option here and then uh, they are popping that video maybe a marketing gimmick i'm not sure but uh, that's a great thing however we are going to keep it as a two which is a two layer pcb designing but again we are going to design a single layer pcb don't confuse yourself in this particular tutorial i'm not going to talk about the two layer pcb designing it's all about single layer through hole technology based pcb designing a fundamental one that's why this course is all about for absolute beginners right and then a board outline should be rectangular because we are beginners, we are not 
you know putting ourselves too much into the shape of the pcb instead the following the process to understand the protocol so that you can design your own pcb at any point of time the next what we are going to do is we are going to set our start x as a zero and end start y as a zero with a width and height of course it is suggesting somewhere around 57 mm by 38 mm uh, I would like to go with a 50 mm by 35 mm just a guess there is no specific reason for this by practice by doing PCBs again and again I could believe that it can be done with this particular distance which is 50 mm by 35 mm in square area. When I click on the apply button then you can see that all the components and the PCB border is created with whatever information we have given inside. Now what we need to do is we need to select all these components be careful while selecting the component you should not select the board outline this is so called board outline you should not select of them and you have to drag them i mean if you select any one of them and if you drag it then it's going to be a misbehaving i mean you just cannot be placing it properly once again instead again you have to follow certain procedure to bring it back instead of that be careful while you are selecting all the component and bringing those component outside the board area because we need to design a pcb right as i already said in the beginning pcb designing is an art which deals with placing a component and working with electronic component not only that one it also deals with the connection between the two components by using a copper track now we are going to do that art and we are going to become a pcb artist cool thing right but yes that is the most important thing which you have to learn as a pcb designer absolute beginners should learn this particular thing now what we are going to do is we are going to refer our schematic while placing the component i'm going to back to schematic and i can look into the system as a block diagram when we are having a system we will be having an input from one side and output from another side output to other side okay so when when we are giving an input we should always expect all the input pins are placed in the one side of the component or one side of the entire product that's how the industrial grade products are designed right that's why what i'm going to do is i'm going to place this dc jack and two pin connector at one side how we can make them uh, associated like how how i can select the footprint of that specific component you can use the designator which is so called a dc1 in this case and you can find a dc1 in the entire component uh, whatever you can see here of course we are designing a very simple circuit that's why it is quite easy to find a dc1 in this circuit but when you are designing a component or when you are designing a hardware with a more than hundreds of component it becomes really ridiculous to find any designator on that time a quickest way is saving this pcb file by hitting a control s and going back to your schematic layout without saving it is not going to happen that's why saving is the most important point saving that pcb file and then going to select the specific component that you want to select in pcb layout coming back to pcb layout and you can see that that specific component is being selected automatically because they are interlinked when it is selected you can drag it and drop it wherever you want now i want to drop this two pin connector somewhere at the input edge hitting up space key on your keyboard will rotate the component straightforward right this is that is also the same thing with respect to schematic design i'm going to place it somewhere here a general placement there is no specific reason for that but make sure that you place them very carefully because that's how aesthetic design of your entire product comes into the picture i'm going to select a dc1 here and i'm going to place that dc1 again somewhere here let me place it uh, just somewhere here just a random positioning uh, there is no uh, specific rules or regulation for this one however uh, you must understand the aesthetic of the product while placing the component as well that's why it is an art it is not a joke actually <laughs> so c1 is a capacitor which is an input capacitor i'm going to select that one and i'm going to place this c1 somewhere here purposefully i am placing it like this the reason for that i'll i'll let you know in the later part of the story then we are going to place the 705 just drag it and drop it somewhere here 
And do remember, when you are placing these components, you must understand the principle of IPC standard, which stands for International Printed Circuit. So IPC is all about the set of rules and regulatory organization in PCB industry, which helps every PCB designer in the entire globe to understand each other. For example, if I am designing any PCB, I should follow certain standards so that my PCB can be used or manufactured in anywhere in the world. That's how the standardization comes into the picture right that's why we need to follow the IPC standard to follow IPC standard we must understand them again it's very complicated topic which I'm not going to touch upon right now but still remember IPC standards one of the IPC standards says that the heat emitting components like 7805 regulator which is a power electronic device which is going to emit the certain amount of heat after certain usage which has to be placed at the board edge so that's why I'm going to place this particular IC at the board edge. If you are placing this component somewhere here or somewhere like this, it is a very bad positioning of the component. That's why I told you, right? Placing a component on a PCB is an art. So you must understand this artistic work and do that art as a, you know, passionate work. That's why I'm a passionate PCB designer. However, jokes apart, let's come back to the point. So we need to place this 7805 regulator at the board edge so that you can design a PCB with the international standards. Then what we have next one is all about the C2 which is output capacitor for 7805. I'm going to bring that capacitor and place it somewhere here. I'm, I'm often use the space bar to rotate the component. So make sure that you have a habit of using a space bar while rotating the component as well. Then we are going to use a resistor. Of course, there are only three components left. I'm not going to refer my schematic once again now because it's quite simple. Just three components. And I'm going to place the resistor here. I'm going to place the LED somewhere here because it's straightforward and uh, very easy to place LED somewhere here. And then we will be having a output connector, which I'm going to place, uh, I think, here, this is, this is the best place, right? Exactly at the middle of the entire PCB. Uh, my PCB looks little congested because I'm very uh, proficient with the PCB designing and placement of the component. That's why uh, it looks little congested to you, probably because you are a beginner and all. Don't worry about that. You can place these components little wider, but do follow the rules and regulation, like placing this 7805 at the board edge and placing these connectors at the outside only and using the directions properly okay follow those rules and regulations and place the component little uh, spacious uh, as, as per your convenient but now as per my knowledge this one is better one now i'm going to reduce the size of the pcb because there is extra pcb which i just don't want to waste uh, as, as a pcb as a resource so i'm going to go to tools click on the set board outline and I'm going to change the width to 40 probably. I'm just giving a trial and error. 40 is a two less. I feel it is two less actually. <laughs> so I'm going to make it as a 45 probably. Wonderful, 45 is a good one. I'll just extend my connector a little outside and uh, I'm, I'm going to extend my resistor a little bit like this. And then my LED somewhere here, the capacitor. 7805 uh, somewhere middle this looks a very good placement of component i i feel little comfortable with this and i'm going to start with the next procedure this is the first and foremost important activity when you are going to design a pcb by yourself placing component plays more than 30 percent of your circuit design activity do remember when you are designing a single layer PCB, when you are designing a THT hold uh, technology based PCB or when you are designing a very simple circuit, then it doesn't look very complicated. It doesn't look very important for you to follow the placement of component. But if you want to become a professional PCB designer, the way in which you follow the procedure, okay? So make sure that when you are designing a PCB, work on placing the components much more than just uh, creating your circuit as, as a PCB designer because placement activity contributes more than 30% of your entire PCB work. Now what we are going to do is we are going to create a copper track between one of them, well, one point to another point of the component. 
as we can see that there are some blue color lines from one component pin to another component ka one pin because we have created those connections in our schematic activity they are called nets in schematic similarly they are also called as the ratness or rattleness in our PCB layout activity. By using this ratness, we are going to create a copper connectivity between the components by using our wiring tool or the copper track tool. So by hitting a W key, you will get the, uh, you know, the way in which you can make the copper connection, which is a wiring tool, or maybe you can say it is a track tool available in your uh, EDA tool. Of course, uh, by clicking on this icon or by clicking on the W key on our keyboard, you will be getting this one. But now there is a one important information which we have to discuss. We are designing a single layer PCB. We are not designing a two layer one, right? So we always need to design our PCB in bottom copper layer because when you are designing a single layer PCB, you always start with bottom copper layer. When you are designing a two layer PCB, then you are going to use a bottom copper as well as top copper. That doesn't mean that you cannot use a top copper as a single layer PCB. You can use, but it is very risky because when you are going for a manual production of PCBs, which is a toner transfer method, then it is very, very difficult and just impossible to manufacture top copper based PCB and solder the component because there is a reason behind it. Probably if you are an experienced person, if you have had experienced something related to that, probably you will, you will be able to understand this statement. If not, if you are a beginner, just don't worry. Follow the rules that is all about using a bottom copper. How do we select a bottom layer or a bottom copper? By clicking on this blue color icon here or maybe blue color uh, small window, which is all about layers and objects. Uh, you know uh, toolbar there you can click on this bottom layer and then start creating a copper track or you can use a b key on your uh, keyboard just hitting on the b key on your keyboard it will switch to bottom layer by hitting a t key it will switch to top copper layer i'll hit a b key and then i'll go with a w key i'm a kind of a person who use a shortcuts a lot when i'm designing a pcb so try to use those shortcuts if it is helpful to you now what i need to do is i need to hover our mouse cursor on the one pad of the component and hit the left key on your mouse the moment when you hit a left key on your mouse then you are just you need to hit that you just need to press the left key on your mouse not holding it down so once once you hit the left key on your mouse you can see that your cursor is attached with a blue color line which is nothing but a copper track now the copper track is having a width of 0.254 or huh, 0.254 mm which is way smaller when you are designing a pcbs with uh, power electronics that's why i'm going to hit a tab key on my keyboard and i'm going to change the width of the track there is a concept called track width which we discussed in the fundamentals of pcb designing video in this particular tutorial if you have not watched that click on the i button here and do watch that video as well now i'm going to change the track width to 1 mm because that is the standard which we use when we are designing a basic pcbs and i'm going to connect this particular copper track to any other pad which is intent to connect you cannot connect this copper pad to any other component which is not intent to connect because you have created a schematic in that schematic you told software where this pin to be connected so you cannot change that decision in your pcb layout activity you must change it in schematic and then come back to pcb layout if you want to change it but right now i think we don't want to change it we just need to follow the circuit diagram that's why i'm going to connect this particular pin or i'm i'm going to connect this particular copper track to this particular pin how to connect that hover your mouse on that particular pad and click on the left key or left button on your mouse and then the copper track will be attached to your cursor still so if you want to detach your cursor from that particular copper track click on the right key of your mouse once you are done with this you can see that your copper track is designed that's a great thing you have created your first copper track like this you have to create all the copper tracks in the entire circuit how do we do that by using the same procedure hitting a w key and starting with connection you can see like this, I'm going to connect this point to this point very easily because all right, there is a small mistake I have done. I have to connect the capacitor first before anything. So I'm going to connect the capacitor first of all. 
because our signal should flow from the capacitor there is there are some fundamentals of pcb designing or fundamentals of electronic engineering which i am not at all comfortable to share in this particular fundamentals of pcb designing tutorial but i believe that you are aware of there are some fundamentals what that fundamental is all about when you are designing a circuit like this the capacitor should be the facing point from the signal whatever the input signal is coming we should connect that signal to the capacitor first and through that capacitor after that capacitor that signal has to be given to 7805 that is what i'm trying to follow here both the inputs are connected to the capacitor first and then that capacitor output is given to our regulator i can create a y section here by giving it like this this one is much better i think this one again against the ipc standard so i could go with this one so both signals are coming both power pins or power things are coming to the capacitor and then i am going to give that uh, power to 7805 then we will be connecting a ground ground i'll do it at the last because that's not um, you know so important at this point of time the important thing is all about the main connections first thing is this input connection and then we will be having output capacitor here i'm going to connect it like this and i'm going to adjust this particular track to the middle because see here there is a concept called clearance which we discussed in our previous tutorial uh, again the fundamentals of pcb designing there we discussed the minimum distance between a copper track and the pad should be at least more than 0.2 mm in in our such cases where we have done something like this the clearance is less than 0.2 mm that that's why we need to create a proper clearance between them create isolation between them how can we do that we can drag that particular track a little upward once we drag that particular track a little upward you can see that a lot of clearance is created between them make sure that you do this activity very properly because this is very essential most of the student does it in a wrong way and end up getting the track somewhere near like this what happens if we keep like this when you are manufacturing pcb there is a probability that these two connections will get short if it is short then it is as good as short circuit in your entire hardware which which is absolutely no use that's why make sure that you create a proper clearance between a track and the pad or maybe the track and another track okay now what we are going to do is we are going to connect this resistor as well using a w key i'm going to connect it here a led and led should be connected to ground which i'll do later and the output of this capacitor has to be connected to the output connector which is very important and then now we have an option to connect with a ground now i have a two ways to connect the ground here these are the two important ways i want your full attention here first one way is by using a track which we have just started off by using a track i'm going to connect this point to this capacitor and uh, Furthermore, furthermore, like by, by using a W key, I'm in the track, I'm going to connect it like this. This is absolutely straightforward way, which is absolutely right one. There is nothing wrong in this. But I prefer, why can't we do a smart work when we can do a smart work, right? So what I'm preferring is, instead of doing this individual connections, what we can do is, we can use a copper pour area option or a copper pouring option available in the PCB tools section. When I click on the copper pour, it will pop up a small window saying that which a net you want to pour in the entire PCB. In my case, it is a ground because ground is something that we want to pour in the entire PCB. Then I'm going to select that, hit OK on that. And then I'm going to create the copper pour around this entire PCB. You can see that I'm going to create it like this. Randomly, I can draw it, but uh, professionally, I just want to make sure that it is drawn properly. Otherwise, it's absolutely no use and it looks it works actually but uh, it doesn't look professional so we are here to learn something professional skill not just uh, you know designing a pcb for sake of designing a pcb after doing that you can see that entire pcb is having a copper pore which is nothing but a ground pore and all the components which are having a ground connectivity are connected each other by default no need to create any track for the ground 
this is the best way to do it but there is one hint which you have to follow here once you create like this you have to select that copper pore by clicking on the you know edge of this particular area that you have created and then change the clearance there is option called clearance here change that clearance to 1 mm or maybe 0.8 mm or 0.5 mm at least for proper clearance between the tracks and the connector i'll go with the 1 mm because that is the most standard one and the most safest one so once you click on i mean once you create a 1 mm ka clearance between a track and the copper pore it will create a proper gap between them this will isolate a short circuit or this will avoid the short circuit between any track and the ground track this is how your ground track can be created this is one way another one way is dragging a track and all if you are not comfortable with pouring a copper in the first attempt then go with a track connection how do we get to know that whether our pcb is done or not whether we are done with the entire connection activity or not one specific hint is you can go to the design manager and you can see that there is a net option once you click on the refresh button here then it will show all the nets in a tick mark that means all the nets are connected for example for example i'll just delete this particular uh, track here just for the sake of demonstration i'll click on the refresh button over here then you can see that p1 underscore 2 is not connected that track is not at connected the moment when you click on that you can see that that particular track is being highlighted so by doing like this you can get to know that whether your entire pcb is completed or not now i'm going to create that track once again or i can just hit a control z I'm a lazy person, not, not so lazy to design a PCB and all, but just instead of doing it once again, probably I'll click at control Z, right? So then I'll, I'll just create a rebuild a copper area just to make sure that everything is proper. And then I'm going to click on the refresh button here. Hola, done. You can see that all the connections, which are so-called nets, which are nothing but the connection between one component to another component, which we have created in the schematic is now implemented in PCB layout. Congratulations, you have completed your first PCB designing activity. There are several ways to design this PCB even more better. But for beginners, this is the most simplest and most easiest way to learn how to design PCBs. Along with this PCB designing and verification of whether your all nets are connected or not, we are also having something called a DRC error. DRC error is something that deals with the design rule chuck. DRC stands for design rule check. Design rule check is all about whether you are following the international PCB designing standards or not. Of course, they are configurable. You can change those rules and regulations for your project and then you can verify. But right now, a dimensional or maybe the a normal standards which are followed by most of the PCB design engineers, whether you are following them or not, it is going to be checked by software by using a DRC errors. So in this DRC, what are the concern points? The concern point is the clearance and the track width and the component position. Whatever the component position we have done right now is sufficient enough to say a DRC is zero. There is no error with the design rules. But if you are placing any component on the other component, if you, any component is overlapping, when you are soldering the PCB in reality, it is very difficult to see that the component can be more soldered in the, in the PCB because they are overlapping. How can you solder them? It's just not possible. If that kind of errors are there in your PCB, if you are placing the component one upon the another in the design activity, the DRC error is going to pop up. If you are having a very thin track width, which is less than 0.254 mm, then DRC is going to pop up an error. If you are having a very less clearance between one track to another track, one pad to another pad, one component pin to another component pin, then it is going to pop up an error saying that there is a low clearance between these two components or these two pins or points. These are the very popular errors that we can come across with respect to DRC error. But of course, there are so many other errors when it comes to PCB designing as a whole industry. Of course, for absolute beginners, it is not necessary to understand. That's why this is how you can design your PCB and cross verify whether your design is having a zero DRC or not, okay? So once you're done with this, what is the next step? You can save your file and you can check whether your PCB looks good or not by clicking on the 2D image. This is the 2D image and you can change the top side to bottom side and check with the PCB layout activity and all or, or you can change the color of the PCB and just cross verify whether your PCB looking good or not. This is a 2D image. Now we'll go to the 3D image because 
just verifying all the component and placement of the component is very important. Now you can see that this capacitor is very close to this connector compared to this capacitor closer to this particular component. However, I believe this is okay because there is sufficient uh, space between these two components. That's why I feel okay with that. But if you feel uncomfortable with this, then no worries. You can drag this particular capacitor a little this side and then redesign your PCB. Not an issue. And you can see that 7805 is exactly at the border edge so that you can add a heat sink as big as you want and this connector is at the border edge and uh, you can see that this connector is also at the border edge of course we can notice that these connectors are located in a wrong direction in 3d model it's not a fault with respect to your footprint it is a fault with respect to 3d model association which we are not going to deal in this particular tutorial just just leave it as it is okay now the pcb is not so complete of course, PCB designing is complete, but PCB is not so complete. Why? Because this PCB needs a proper identification, a proper design activity as a professionals. If you want to become a professionals, then you have to do something extra than just designing a PCB. What are those? One thing is all about mounting holes. If you give this particular PCB to any customer, where they are going to mount it and how they are going to mount it. There is no drill hole, right? We need to put a drill hole for this. And then after placing the drill hole and all, how they are going to connect input and output? Which one is a positive, which one is negative? Being a designer, you will understand this one is positive and this one is negative. But for a customer, how they are going to understand that one? You need to give some indication, right? You need to give uh, some indicating text on that particular PCB. And also, if you are interested, you can place your logo, company name, or your name on this PCB for a branding purpose. These two things are left in this particular activity. And of course, this is for professional PCB designer. If you want to become a professional, go ahead with this. Now, I'm going to click on this hole option here, and I'm going to bring that hole and place it somewhere here randomly. And then I'm going to hit the escape key on my keyboard. I'm going to select that particular drill hole, and I'm going to change the hole diameter as a 3 mm because in electronic industry 3 mm is a very standard drill hole for any component or any kind of pcb mount or component mounting and we are going to place this drill hole exactly with the mathematical coordination it's not just a random placement okay so i believe that it is good to go with a 3 mm uh, distance from the board edge which is 3 mm x direction and uh, minus 3 mm in y direction since our pcb is having uh, somewhere around 35 mm by 45 mm size which is a dimension a drill hole placement is going to be uh, minus 3 for all the dimensions that we are calculating so i'm going to copy this particular drill hole or you can bring a new drill hole but i'm going to copy this one because the 3 mm car dimension will will be remain with us all the time so i'm going to place it randomly here and i'm going to select that drill hole and how how i'm how i'm going to give a center x to that 45 minus 3 mm because we are giving minus 3 mm my inside 3 mm with a board so 42 is the answer here and then we are having a minus 3 here which is straightforward and uh, at the bottom side which is 42 and 32 because 35 mm pcb it is right and then i'm going to place the drill hole somewhere here which is 3 mm inside with a minus 32 mm okay so all these things are going to be wonderful now i feel little uncomfortable here look at this the drill hole is very near to this particular component which is a dc jack so what i'm going to do now i'm going to disable my a uh, copper uh, solid region which is a copper pore and i'm going to move this particular component a little upside a very little upside because this this distance is very small so i'm going to move this one as well and we are done i believe we are done because both components are now very safe from having a very good clearance between the drill hole now i'm going to select the border which is a copper pore and i'm going to change the no solid to solid and i'm going to keep a clearance as 1 mm now you can see that the four drill holes are ready first thing is done now let's talk about the silk layer, which is the most important thing when you are giving this product to any customer. So what we can do for that, we can we can go to the top silk layer here by, by clicking on that particular icon here. You can go to the top silk layer ka 
layer and then you are going to change the name of these component if you want or organize the name of the component in a proper direction in my case i believe organizing them in a proper direction is a best practice like p1 is here i'm going to select the p1 by holding down my left key on the mouse and i'm going to hit a space bar and i'm going to place them like this and i'm going to place the u1 somewhere here and c1 is in another direction i'm going to rotate it and place it somewhere here so that the person who is assembling the pcb will get to know all the component cut designator very easily by looking at the pcb in one direction need not to rotate it in another direction just in one direction he can or he or she can able to identify the all components so that's why i'm going to organize these designator in one direction like this even r1 also i'm going to organize it like this and p2 also i'm going to organize it in this direction okay now we are done with organizing the designators what is the next step we are going to create a text option here so i'm going to create a text and i'm going to double click on that and i'm going to write uh, v in because that is the input for our entire system and i'm going to change it to 0.15 as a track width 1.5 as uh, this one or maybe 0.2 as a uh, stroke width line width is 0.2 and height is going to be 1 mm probably 1 mm is a right one i believe i'm not still sure on that but 1 mm or maybe 1.25 it's just a trial and error method there is no specific rules for this and i'm going to copy this text and paste it here by using a our favorite control c and control v okay and i'm going to place it here and change it as a gnd which is a ground so this is a v in and ground for the input connection of course this is a, DG, a dc jack we are not need to um, inform what is the positive and negative in this because it is industrial standard nobody needs any confirmation on that then we need a same kind of a text at the output side also where is the output right so i'm going to write somewhere here and i'm going to write it as a plus 5 volt i'm not going to write v out for this why because it's very sure it is a 5 volt because our regulator is 705 that's why it is absolutely plus 5 volt so there is no need to write it as a v out instead of that we'll make a even more specific that is plus 5 volt and then i'm going to change it to a gnd at the other side so i'll just make it as a center as much as possible and the last but not the least i'm going to add my company name that is all about linked frequency amazing so we are done with our pcb designing activity hola so this is how we need to design a professional pcb using easy eda tool that's where this professional skills comes into the picture right so the next important part is how to export this pcb for reviewing activity okay we are going to talk about reviewing activity because in the previous video i have shared you if you want me to review your schematic you can share that particular schematic uh, link of that particular schematic in the comment section below similarly in this video also you can go to the file you can go to the export option and you can go to the pdf option and in this particular pdf make sure that you click on the full color click on the uh, uncheck this top copper and check on the bottom layer top silk layer keep it as it is and then just click on the you know board outline and multi layer and whole they should be checked actually you can look into my screen right now they should be checked all all of them the four four or five of them should be checked and then click on the export option and the pop-up window will appear there you will change the name to uh, pcb underscore pcb underscore plus five volt pcb power supply i'll change the uh, pcb once again i mean why why it is adding one more pcb i don't know uh, and I'm going to add an extension as a .pdf and then click on the save option. Whatever the file you have generated now, please share that file in your Google Drive and share the link of that Google Drive in the comment section below. Or, or you can just check with other ways how we can share that particular file with us in the comment section below. So by looking at that particular PDF file, I'm going to give you my review comment if anything that need to be improved. Okay, this is how you need to design your PCB and complete your activity with respect to PCB designing by using Easy EDA tool. All right, I believe we have learned something new in this particular tutorial. If you like our content, if you enjoyed our content and if you learned something from our content, then consider subscribing to our channel Linked Frequency. Tune yourself to make a difference.